Six strategies to avoid being relocated into a FEMA camp. The number one is you need to be prepared enough to not need to seek out resources. This is probably the best advice that I can give you. Most people that are going to go to FEMA are seeking them out for basic supplies and probably didn't prepare enough in advance for the disaster or emergency. Even if you plan on scavenging for resources, being out and about can increase your exposure to being rounded up by a National Guard unit and escorted straight to a FEMA camp. Now at the very least, you should have a survival kit so you can be self-reliant and not need to seek out help. Now, number two is move to a location that has a low risk of mandatory evacuation. You can usually tell ahead of time what areas could be prone to a mandatory evacuation. Is your home vulnerable to flooding or a nuclear incident or hurricanes? Is it in an urban area or near a military base that could be targeted by attacks? All of these are examples of where a mandatory evacuation could be put in place. So knowing your risk of these threats can help you see the potential for evacuations. Mandatory evacuation areas usually spawn FEMA camps just outside of the evacuation area to house all of the evacuees. If at all possible, try to have a better plan than being funneled into one of these camps. Now if you want to get really clever, you can mark your house as if it's already been evacuated by a search and rescue unit. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, it's relatively simple. Right there's the marking. All you need is a can of spray paint. You pair this with light and noise discipline and your home could be easily skipped over by anyone enforcing a mandatory evacuation. Number four is build a shelter in place kit so you have less need to evacuate in a biological or chemical emergency. Now by all means, don't get me wrong here. Sometimes you just have to leave. If there's a chemical cloud hanging over your house or a nasty pandemic spreading through the country like wildfire, it may be necessary to bug out if you don't have the proper tools to stay put. A shelter in place kit is simply an add on to your typical survival kit that lets you barricade airflow in your home, making it as airtight as possible. Number five is have a bug out location that's not your main residence. Now we've touched on this in earlier videos, but location plays a big factor in your risk of being evacuated. Have multiple locations available ensures that you don't get pinned down in one spot. Now I know not many people have the resources to own multiple properties, so making friends with preppers that are not in your area comes in handy here. If you don't have any prepper friends who live far enough away, try helping a few non-prepper friends become preppers. Number six is stay informed and know what's going to happen before a roundup occurs. Information is always key. Communication is just passing information back and forth. While news sources on TV and the radio can be managed and censored, amateur radio cannot. Staying informed during emergencies using CB and ham radios can help immensely. Not only can you stay ahead of any planned evacuations, but you can communicate with others to work together. Now, while a FEMA camp might not be the worst place you find yourself in an emergency, it's not somewhere you want to end up if you can help it. It's a particularly vulnerable site for chain reaction disasters, attacks, and pandemics. Going to a camp should be a last resort. When you are out of resources, don't have a shelter, and you're completely out of hope. But on the other hand, if you need medical attention, finding a camp could save your life. Weigh your options and risks and know what's best for you and your family. Now, if you made it this far, you know you like my content. So make sure you're subscribed and hit that like button. AP out.